good afternoon everyone today i'll be taking uh, telling the story of india space journey how we began from a humble beginning to achieving ground breaking milestones so most of us have seen these launches broadcasted from sri harikota the space port of india yet have you ever wondered what happens in those crucial moments before the lift off the onboard computer takes control of the launch vehicle ensuring all the systems are functioning correctly once all pre flight checks are complete the automatic launch sequence initiates the moment everything is go for the launch the rocket engines roar to life generating the millions of newtons of thrust propelling the launch vehicle to the sky once as the launch vehicle rises to the sky the multiple stages are burning out the first stage burns out at, burns out at around altitude of 60 to 70 km later on as the launch vehicle crosses the 100 km altitude which is a kerman line internationally recognized boundary of space so once it crosses that altitude the payload fairing of the launch vehicle gets separated as the atmosphere is no longer dense enough at that uh, to harm any uh, any harm to the spacecraft once the second stage crosses the 100 km altitude it uh, hand over the control to the upper stage which propels the launch vehicle higher once the uh, upper stage reaches a, at a particular orbit which is uh, once it is a, all the conditions of the satellite injections are met the satellite is injected into that orbit now uh, throughout this uh, trajectory of this launch vehicle the telemetry of both the launch launch vehicle and the spacecraft is being continuously transmitted to the ground it is this ground station uh, where we continuously track the launch vehicle and the spacecraft and all which helps to get the health parameters of the launch vehicle and the spacecraft and also it is this ground station only using the, the data of these spacecraft we are developing the applications so uh, in order to look ahead where we are uh, going ahead in the future we need to uh, reflect on the our past how we began our uh, journey here so our journey of india space has been began at a small fishing village in thumba which is a thiruvananthapuram uh, in a there was a church which was being used as a mission control and uh, at those in those times the launch vehicle was being transmitted over the bicycle that was such a humble beginning of our in those times and that was being so seared uh, seared vision and dedication of our uh, visionary leader dr vikram sarabhai who initiated the space program in india so in 1962 the space program has been initiated with the formation of incospar later on we had the formation of the uh, isro in 1969 uh, we had a first uh, uh, launch vehicle which was uh, you can say uh, niki apache rocket uh, which was been launched from the tall why this thumba was being selected in the uh, for the first launch was that it was located at the magnetic equator of the earth which was giving a initial pull uh, the earth rotation was giving a advantage for the initial push to the launch vehicle now this was the nikia party which was being launched from the uh, which was a us made from the first time from the indian soil later on in 1967 the uh, indigenous launch vehicle which was rohini 75 was being launched from a uh, indian soil like in later on there was a requirement that other than the sounding rocket uh, we have also had to push uh, the satellite into the orbit for which we need to have the development of satellite launch vehicle so uh, in 1980 we had a development of the satellite launch vehicle 3 uh, which was a four stage rocket all the stages were uh, solid motors you can see uh, in those times we had a vision uh, leaders like kalam sir um, satish daman sir with the development of this uh, satellite launch vehicle uh, with the uh, slv3 we also had been developing for the augmentation to the launch vehicle by in order to have the higher payload capacity to reach the orbit from the S S slv3 we had the development of aslv uh, which was uh, giving the advantage of taking the technology of uh, step on booster further on uh, we have the program for pslv in 1994 which further increase the payload capacity from 30 kg which was in the slv3 to 150 kg in the uh, aslv to uh, you can say 1.7 ton of the pslv in the leo later on in order to increase the further payload capacity from 1.7 ton it was being 
the payload capacity has been increased to 2.2 ton to GSLP. It was this vehicle which was being used for, uh, you can say, the Chandrayaan uh, 3 mission, uh, Mangalyaan mission which was being used by the PSLV. Later on, we also had the requirement for the human, uh, human launch vehicle, right? So, with this, along, uh, taking the knowledge of these launch vehicles, we had the, uh, we are right now in the development of HRLV, which is being already been configured and it's already been tested. So, the advantage, the difference between this HRLV and LVN series is that it is a human rated launch vehicle, which is having a crew escape module and also all the systems are triple redundant, so as to make sure the safety of the uh, crew is made sure. Also, we had, you know, to have a higher turnaround time and to launch the smaller satellites, we have the SSLV program, uh, which has been already tested and the reusable launch vehicle, so that a higher turnaround can be uh, covered. So, what is the future right now? So, in order to have the higher payload capacity and to uh, uh, remove the reliance on foreign uh, transportations, so we added the uh, program for NGLV. So, it will further increase our payload capacity to uh, orbit from right now, the, which is around 4 ton to the LEO. It will be increased up to the 10, 30 ton to the uh, LEO and uh, 10 ton to the GTO, GO. So, all this program from SLV to GSLV had led us to achieve the missions like Chandrayaan 3, Mangalyaan. So, while this uh, development in launch vehicle was been going on, we also were uh, developing our satellites also in our country. So, different types of satellites has been uh, covered up in the uh, development while we have reached in these decades. So, it's the one of the satellites the, which was the Aryabhata satellite. Uh, it was a it was a first indigenous satellite which was launched in 1975 from a Soviet rocket. Another one was the Bhaskara 2, Bhaskara 1 which was also an indigenous satellite but launched from a Soviet uh, rocket. But later on in 1980, we had our own first uh, Rohini 1 satellite, which was an indi indigenous spacecraft launched from an indigenous rocket, which was a SLB-3. Now there is a different, as per the requirement of uh, uh, society, there was a development of different types of satellites, like communication satellites, which is uh, mostly at the, uh, or at the location of the GEO, uh, and so as to uh, make sure that the satellite is at the fixed uh, higher uh, fixed point and it is pointing to at a particular location of the earth. Uh, we had the development of G-Site series. Other than the communication satellite, we also had a, a program for developing our own remote sensing satellite so as to provide the earth observation in order to give the details like uh, meteorological or uh, disaster management weather forecasting for this. We had a program for the INSAT series satellite, which was the Indian uh, National Satellite Series. Uh, you can see there are multiple IRS series satellite also which has been launched in these uh, decades. From let's say from the ReSat, uh, which uh, OceanSat, CartoSat. OceanSat is being used for uh, monitoring the oceans parameters, uh, chlorophylls, uh, sea surface temperature. CartoSat is being used for uh, mapping the cartographic region of the earth. Resat series is being is a radar imaging satellite which is you can say in order to uh, map image the earth of earth, earth in, irrespective of you can say around uh, the clouds also this will give you a radar imaging uh, which will penetrate the clouds for the all time uh, monitoring of the earth surface. Now other than this communication uh, remote sensing satellite we also had the development of navigation satellite which is an indigenous navigation satellite. Uh, you are already aware that we uh, we are using the GPS, but are you aware that we also have our own uh, navigation uh, program, which is uh, helping us to, uh, which is helping India's military uh, fishermen's uh, navigating through the terrains. So we had the development of IRNSS. Along with this, uh, beyond the earth, we are also trying to develop the satellites for exploring the space. So, just like we had the first uh, launch of Astrosat in 2015, which was being used for uh, uh, studying the deep space. Also, we are uh, we had launched in uh, last year only 2024 uh, the ExpoSat, which is uh, used for finding the uh, source of X-ray from the deep space. Now. What happens that all these satellites, we need to retrieve those data at the ground station. Once we retrieve those data in the ground station, we have to, we are developing application on that. The applications uh, of uh, depends on the satellite types. 
the application can be which right now we are already using on our day to day basis like uh, communication 5g technology ai or uh, telemedicine tele educations so all these being are right now already being uh, used using the satellite technology but beyond our day to day activities we also have certain for the uh, space applications like in agriculture mineral mapping uh, mining forecasting all these things uh, are being leveraged using the satellite technology so i'll tell you a story that uh, let me tell you a story that about a fisherman who used to go to a uh, deep sea uh, to find the uh, fishes but most of the time what happens that uh, he doesn't know about where to go the fish, uh, to find the fish and most of the time he once he comes back he is empty handed but uh, later on he he has been contacted by a space scientist and uh, the potential fishing zone of the uh, its coordinate has been shared to the fisherman once the fisherman has got the coordinates of potential fishing zone he was able to uh, get to know that okay in which direction he has to go and find the fishes so along with this uh, there is another uh, technology which has been shared to the fisherman is the navig which is uh, right now which is being uh, our own uh, navigation satellite so the navig what it does that it helps the fisherman to know okay whether he is crossing the international uh, water or not earlier most of the times uh, when the fisherman used to go cross the uh, when they were goes to go for the fishing they may tend to cross the international borders so with the application of a potential fishing zone um, a app like sagarwani motion app is being uh, shared to the fisherman where they can get the notification alert whether they are uh, where the potential fishing zone is there where uh, they can go for the navigation of and to catch the fish we also have certain applications like uh, buniri where uh, recently you can see we had our in uh, los angeles the california fire was there Uh, from Boone report only the admission uh, we can analyze okay how much the extent of the fire has been there. This is a Boone Vista uh, portal which is used for uh, you can say the monitoring the cyclone in the real time. And using Boone only administration used to see the time lapse change of you can say the some glaciers uh, break. And also the recently as uh, we have the Mahakum right now going on. From the satellite imagery only, which is uh, imaged from a research satellite, radar imaging satellite, so it uh, it gives a, a, a all time 24 by 7 monitoring uh, to the administration so that they can do the crowd uh, crowd management. We also have a endem portal, uh, which is uh, which is your single portal for disaster management database. All the disasters uh, like forest fire, earthquake, all the things which happens in a, uh, in our national level is being listed at at a single platform there are multiple other uh, portals uh, which has been developed by the issue uh, like uh, you can say uh, uh, snow melt runoff hydrological flood early warning system now all these applications which we are um, being used on the earth we are also <laughs> looking beyond the earth like mars orbiter mission which uh, which was being um, implemented successfully by the india in its first attempt we had the chandrayaan 3 mission which was a which was a series beyond uh, chandrayaan 1 chandrayaan 2 and chandrayaan 3 later on we are also planning for the chandrayaan 4 which is a lunar sample return mission we also had the uh, last year the launch of aditya l1 for studying the sun now in the future where we are looking that we have a plan of gaganyaan mission uh, which is uh, for sending our first indian to the uh, orbit which is uh, requiring a, a, a crew module you can see there is a orbital module which is consisting of crew module and the service module one as india is uh, aiming for the achieving higher by sending the um, first indian to the orbit we are also planning uh, to have our own space station so for the in order to have the uh, bharatiya space, space station we have already achieved the docking experiment using the spadex so by 2035 we are planning for uh, our own space station in the space and by 2040 we are planning to have our own uh, indian on the moon now what is the what are the advanced technology we are looking already working on so you can see the advanced uh, technology like humanoid is being just like in the gaganyaan mission we will be providing the uh, viomnot uh, viomitra which will be assisting the crew, uh, crews in the uh, gaganyaan mission also the quantum communications Uh, it, uh, the right now the uh, technology is advancing for the quantum world so uh, right now whatever the techno uh, communications which we are doing 
is being done using normal internet and RSA algorithm or encryption thing. But with the quantum thing, these can be easily broken out. So ISO is making sure that all the communications among the satellites or from satellite to the ground is quantumly secured. Also, we are all focusing on the development of our uh, launch vehicle, which is having a capability of vertical takeoff, vertical landing features. And for you all students, so how you can all contribute to the ISO program in the India Space Journey? Um, most of the time, you can participate in the uh, competitions which are being done, conducted by the ISRO, like ISRO Robotics Channel, where you can build your own uh, rovers, CubeSat, CanSat, and even uh, utilize the space for, uh, ISRO portals like Vedas, MOSTEC, and analyze those data. So, I'll say that um, space technology is not just about reaching new frontiers, it's about dreaming big, exploring the unknowns and helping the society to grow further. Thank you, Dreamic. Keep exploring.